Hey guys, what is going on? It is me, Box 12 here, and today I'm going to be talking to you about how to get more white bags in Realm of the Mad God. Now, I understand that Silver Dollar made that video a little while ago, and it's probably superior to mine in every way, but I don't freaking care! So what exactly is a white bag? And I mean, I'm being serious, could you actually pull up a Webster's definition for that? White bag. A sack-like item consisting of silk-embedded fibers, that of the color white. Dang, that was... It's actually pretty good, freak. So there are three stages of loot that you can get on a boss. There's the purple bag, which is soulbound damage, but you don't really get anything that you want. There's a loot bag, which is this dark blue color. And then there's the white bag, which is just a UT modification of the actual blue loot bag. There is a cyan bag too, but man, I don't want to freaking talk about that. I don't, I don't know. So the question still remains, how do you get that white bag? Well, first, you have to actually get your soulbound damage. And I'm not talking about that freaking purple bag. That thing's such a freaking waste. I hate it. I mean, seriously, with the blue loot bag, it's like, well done, soldier. You know, you've done your duty. Here's your reward. With the freaking purple bag, he's just like, oh, freak, you wanted something too? And he just reaches into his back pocket and pulls out some dryer lint. Here you go. Yeah. That's what this thing is. Dryer lint. I don't want that. So rather than asking yourself, how can I get more white bags? You should be asking yourself, how can I secure my damage? Every character has its own way of getting damage in. The Paladin has a buff that can heal himself, but to compensate, he has low def and low vit. On its counterpart, the Knight or the Warrior or whatever, the Knight has high def and high vit, but it can't heal itself and it has low wisdom. You just have to learn your way around the character. Now, say you're a new player, or maybe not even a new player. You've been playing for like maybe a few months now. You've gotten your character like 2-8 or something with mid-tier gear, and you want to finally get your first white bag. The first thing that you need to know is where white bags are most common, and so I've constructed my own personal experience of white bags into a chart, starting with the most frequent and the least frequent all the way at the bottom. Now, from my experiences, like I said, the most common places to get a white bag are tombs. Tomb of the Ancients drops white bags like pretty much half the time, and there's three bosses. You have three chances to get a white bag. That already increases your chances by three, compared to every single other dungeon, except for, you know, Draconis and Shatters and all that, but like Snake Pit, UDL, Abyss, you only get one chance unless you find a treasure room. But right off the bat, you have a triple chance to get a white bag. And heck, it's f so frequent. Like seriously, if you can get into a guild, or even just go into a public tomb, and just do it frequently enough, you will get a white bag. It is not that difficult. The hardest part is getting your damage in. But once you've done that, you're all set, buddy. Now you just play the waiting game and see if you get a white bag. And if not, you got two other bosses to give it a shot at. Perfect way to get... You know what? Go out and try it. And if not, well then, Hideki and I are gonna have to make that tomb guide. The second most common place to find white bags would have to be the Abyss of Demons. Now that's... That's mainly due to the fact that abysses are one of the most commonly run dungeons in the entire game, because they're such a great source of death and vit to, you know, pretty mandatory stats for maxing a character. Maybe not so much vit, but death is definitely a necessity if you want to max a character. It's always the first stat that I go for. So I run abysses quite frequently if I ever want to max a character, maybe get a bunch of death, sell it for life, and then sell the life for new gear. It's a pretty universal dungeon that you can do. So the fact that I've run so many means that I've gotten a lot of white bags. I've probably gotten in like 10 15 d blades i mean and then you know god don't even get me started on the femurs and rib cages now sprite worlds are in my opinion equal if not more plentiful with white bags than the abyss of demons now i made that 50 sprite world montage a little while ago and i got about four white bags exactly four white bags but in my abyss montage video i ran about 30 or something dungeons and only got one white bag so maybe if I ran the extra 20, I would have gotten more, but I don't think I could have gotten three more. So there was a chance that abysses weren't exactly the key to getting white bags, and they're harder to do. Sprite Worlds, if you just hop on a trickster and teleport to the boss room, you're there, you have a chance of getting a white bag really quickly. So if you want to go for the white bag quick, I would say do Sprite Worlds over and over. They're not that hard to find. They're easy. Trickster gets you to the boss room. Go for it. Then you've got the Ocean Trench. Now, I don't run too many of these, but I bet if I did, I would get a lot of white bags. And I I, you know, I don't really know the exact drop rate because they just changed it to where, you know, Sea Trap is the white bag and all. I mean, that was, you know, a few months ago, but I haven't done too many trenches since then. So, you know, it could be different. Then we've got the UDL because, you know, Debos aren't exactly the most rare thing anymore, but they're still kind of down there. Finally, we have the Snake Pit. Bulwark, how many how many times, honestly, do you even get a bulwark? I that's that's a rare item. I only have gotten one in my entire life. That's that's saying something. 
Then, you know, you've got the, you've got all these random, Candyland, Belladonna, Shatter, I don't know those. I don't know, I haven't done many of those, so. This is just a general overview of dungeons that a new player might be doing. So go for Tombs and Abysses, and if you can, maybe an Ocean Trench to spice up the variety, I don't know. Alright, since I've wasted enough of your time, I should probably actually talk about how to get damage. Now, if you're a new character, the easiest character to get the hang of with high DPS would have to be the wizard. You have a good amount of dex, a good amount of attack, and your spell bomb does massive damage if you can get it right on target. The only problem is if you're doing a private tomb, you don't want to be spell bombing because you could awaken the other bosses and never actually kill anyone because they all go crazy and you don't have a lot of people and you guys are all new players. What do we do? You don't want that. Now, whenever we're talking about DPS, we're talking about characters in conjunction with items that can deal massive damage. A perfect example of this would have to be the Doombo. It's such a damage dealing item. It does five, 400 to 500 damage, but whenever you're maxed and you have like Pyrrha on and maybe who knows, like a Spectral, you're doing over a thousand damage per shot once you're maxed. It is incredible. But if you're not maxed, the Doombo is still a great way to get damage in because if you're an archer, you can just paralyze the boss and therefore securing your damage, and that was the key that I was talking about before. Make sure that you can secure your damage. That's how you get a white bag, by first getting loot by securing your damage. And that is the archer, in my opinion. If you can, like, get, I don't know, you probably can't get a Doombo yet. It's, you know, it's kind of hard to get. You just have to do a lot of UDLs. But even with just a bow, if you can paralyze the target and just wail on him, you paralyze him on your time whenever you feel like it and whenever you feel like you're comfortable to get damage in. If you're in a safe spot, all right, here, got him. Start getting damage in. All right, we'll wait for his next rotation. Here, get him. And it's perfect. You are fully in control of the battle. You control when you're getting your damage in. It wouldn't hurt to do it a little more frequently, and as you do more of these, you'll learn and you'll get better. That's the great part about this game. It's a, you know, there's a huge learning curve to it, but once you get the hang of it, you got the hang of it. So if you're a new-ish player, I would recommend taking either the Wizard, the Huntress, or the Archer for your first time. Bows do a lot of damage, and the Paralyze is great, but if not, the Wizard has long range, it has a good amount of DPS, and heck, the spell bomb's freaking overpowered. But if you're feeling a little saucy, you know, and you want to try something different, like, hey, I think I can, I think I got the hang of this, then you might want to go towards the melees. Paladin is great because you can buff, giving you more attack, and you can heal yourself if you get hurt. It's fantastic. The only problem with that is that you're also buffing the allies around you, which means you could be causing them to outdamage you. So if you want to be the greedy jerk in the corner who just buffs himself, go for it. I don't care, man. Do what you feel like. Same thing with the warrior. He has a buff and it gets everybody, but, you know, he does a lot of damage by himself anyway. Swords do a lot of damage anyway, so the knight is probably one of the best guys to take in because he has a stun, which means you can get DPS and be sure about it. You can secure your damage once again. Stunning the target means you can't get hurt, which means you have confidence in yourself to go in and get more damage. And if you have MP pots on you, you could chain stun the dude, giving you more damage. Great combination, but once again, it's a little bit risky because if your stun doesn't go off at the right time, you could be taking a best shotgun. Another great thing about the knight in the tomb is that if everybody's getting weakened, your stun will still do its regular damage. Weaken only works for attack, not the actual stun. Now, I really hope I'm giving you true information, but that's what happened with me. Everybody was getting weakened. I was just stunning. Nobody else had any abilities that were doing damage. The wizard wasn't going to go spell bombing. And I got 3-3. But like I said, I could be wrong about that. But I'm pretty confident that Weaken only weakens your actual base attack, not the actual ability damage. Also, two classes that are a little bit undermined are the Trickster and Ninja. They're both very good for getting DPS in. The Trickster, I mean, if you can get a Cronus on him, geez, that would just be fantastic. But if not, the Trickster is still a very good class for DPS. 65 attack, 75 dex. It's fantastic. And the Ninja is even more remarkable. 70-70. Well-rounded, and plus the Shuriken does massive damage. But these characters both have a learning curve to them. They both take time and skill to master. And if you haven't seen my Ninja or Trickster guide, well, then you can go check those out if you want. But anyways, those are my tips on how to get white bags and DPS in general. Follow them if you want. But most importantly, don't forget to check out the next episode when I post it, which will probably be soon. And leave a comment for what you want me to talk about next. Alright? See you!